My name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome to another video here taking a look at how to use Power Automate and integrate it with all the other processes that we have within our Microsoft ecosystem. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can use SharePoint, Power Automate, and uh, Outlook together in order to find any updates on a SharePoint list. Make sure we're only pulling a specific item that is updated, not the entire row, not the entire list, only one specific item that's updated, and then send out an email notification based on that change. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our SharePoint list to get started with our uh, video here today, and then go ahead and build out our flow in order to make sure that we're only pulling the specific items that we want to see. So let's jump right into our flow to see how we're getting started and take a look at that SharePoint list we're gonna use for our back here. So here is our flow, okay? All I have set up is I've created a flow name, I set up an automated cloud flow here to run when an item or file is modified in SharePoint, okay? That's all that I have set up right now. I've chosen my site address and my list name, and that is right here, okay? That's here. I have four different items here on a travel request list. I've just built this using a template, just made some different options here and just added a couple different items here. You can see where I just added some travel requests in the past. These are things I've used in a lot of classes I've used. And so we have four different requests. Then we have a trip title, reason for travel, destination, different items here, airlines, approval notices. Okay, we have a lot of different options here to um, have within our travel request. And what I'd like to set up is a flow that runs only when a specific item, specific value changes in one of these columns. So if I say, maybe for this one, we could take this airline right here. So if the airline that has been chosen for the travel request for maybe uh, traveling for, for work or something, if that airline value it has changed on any of these requests, I want to send an email to the manager of this in individual to, in this case, it's myself, but in, send a man, an email to them to let them know, hey, the selected airline value has changed. Just give you an update if you need to change any paperwork from that point on. But I don't want to send an email for every single item. I don't want it to be if I have a change on my trip title or if there's a change in the destination somewhere or there's a change in the start and end date. I don't wanna send an email when those change. I only want to send an email when the airline has changed. So we need to find a way to filter down to only look at that airline choice and then go ahead and move on to the next steps within the flow at that point. Okay, so we're gonna try to make this as specific as possible to only a selected airline value for this circumstance. So we're gonna jump back here into Power Automate. And for our second step after the trigger that we've already established, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a step here. And we're gonna pull from SharePoint. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we can just go and search for SharePoint here. And for this one, what we want inside of SharePoint is we want to get changes Okay, for an item or file, but the properties only. So we're gonna take this first one right here, get changes for an item or file properties only. And then when we select that, we're gonna go ahead and point back to the exact same site address and list that we're working with. And then we'll go ahead and add in our other features here. So I'm gonna go ahead and point to them. I have a bunch here. I'm gonna make sure I do my boot camp here. And this is something that we cover in our boot camp. So if you're interested in more of these, take a look at some of the options we have at Pragmatic Works and different flow options within our Power Automate boot camp that we have. Our list name, I'm gonna do our travel request list here. The ID, I'm gonna do the ID of the, the item that is modified, that same list ID. And now this is where it gets a little bit different. Here in the since area, what we need to do is we need to use some type of integer, some type of number, a version number of when we want to pull our um, changes from. So in this case, okay, when I have an update, what do I wanna pull all the changes from? So the first version, the second version, the third version, so on and so forth. What we actually wanna think about is, in this case, we wanna pull from the most recent version. So any new update we're always getting, not just since and since a change from the original. So if I make a change and I choose uh, to update an item on this list, but I change it three, four times, I always wanna get the most recent change. 
every single time. And because of that, we need to use some expression language in here to try to set that up for us. So we're gonna come over here to our expression. And if we think about it, if we're trying to go to the most recent change, right? We always wanna go back one version. No matter what version we are on, maybe we're on version 15. We wanna go back to version 14, whatever that most recent change is. That's the, what we wanna use as the, the kind of a modified trigger that we have here to run the rest of the flow. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and subtract one from our versions, okay? So in order to set that up, we're gonna go ahead and use sub for our subtract here, okay? So we're gonna start with that. And then when we start to use our subtraction here, we need to make sure we're using a number, right? Subtracting the number one. In that case, we actually need to, to set up this as an integer. So we're gonna do int for integer there. And when I have this organized for our integer, now we can go ahead and in here set up what are we gonna track one from. All right, so we're gonna go into our dynamic content here and we're gonna come all the way down here, okay? And find in our dynamic content our version number. And I probably just, oh, it's all the way at the bottom. I knew I was, I was looking for it. There it is at the bottom. We're gonna subtract one from our version number. So it doesn't matter what version we currently have within that item in that SharePoint list. We're just gonna go back to the most recent and see what has been changed there. Okay, so version number, there it is. And we're gonna then go to our version number right there. And because we've chosen to subtract, we're gonna make sure on the very last item here, we're gonna subtract one from our version. All right, so we have that all set up, ready to go. So again, what we're doing here in our since, and what since is looking for is some type of number, some type of label for the version. You can see it says it right here, okay? An item version label, some integer value that we need to add in there. You could put 1.0 since the original, 2.0 since the second edition, or in this case, what we want is since the most recent update. So it's gonna be a rolling status here. If I'm on version three, I wanna see anything since version two, right? Whatever the, 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 the most recent update has been. Okay, so we can go ahead and hit okay there. And now we are ready to go ahead and add a condition. Now this condition is gonna be where we have this airline selection, okay? If this has changed, then we can go down a path. So we're gonna add a step here and we're gonna add a condition. And the value that we choose within our condition, now that you see get changes for an item here, we have since our versions, has the column changed? So I'm gonna choose that exact column that has changed here, the airline column, so whether it has changed true or not has changed false, is gonna be the condition that we have. So we can go in here and say, has column changed our airline? I'm gonna make sure we have the right one there. Okay, there's airline is equal to true. So if it has changed, Yes, it's true, then let's go down a path. If not, I'm gonna leave this blank because I don't want anything to happen if our column has not changed, if that selected airline has not changed. So here inside of the if yes branch of if our column has changed, I'm gonna go ahead and add an action. In this case, we could just do some type of notification. I'm gonna choose send an email and we'll choose from Outlook 365 or Office 365 Outlook. I'm gonna send this to, and I'll use some of our dynamic content here from our list here and say, you know what? Let's send this to the manager of whoever's making that request. So they get that, notifi that notification to let them know, hey, somebody has changed the request that they originally made. And then in the subject of this, I'm just gonna put some generic information here. Travel request has been updated. Okay, and then in the body of our message, we can just say, you know, maybe something like good morning, or maybe if it's not in the morning, we do hello. Right, there it is. Um, we can then use some more of our dynamic content here. So let's say, you know what, request or display name has updated their airline selection on their travel request. Spelling counts there. <laughs> and we can do, please see the following details. And we can say, all right, so let's see their trip. 
let's say maybe we'll, yeah, we'll do our trip here. That would be, that would be the title and our dynamic content. And then we can say, let's go with, let's say reason for travel. I'm only, I'm taking straight from here. So we have our trip title. That's just called title, the reason for travel. And then we can just make whatever the new airline selection is, something pretty basic here for this circumstance. So reason for travel, why they're going. And finally, new airline selection. And we can put that in here. In this case, we want to make sure we're not just choosing airline, but airline value, the actual value of the selection. The reason why we're choosing airline value in this case is because this is a choice column. And because it is a choice column, we want to use the value of the selection, whatever choice they made, not just the actual airline itself. Okay, so we're going to pull that there. I think that looks okay. We're in a good spot here to save and test this. And let's make sure that once we test it, we're only receiving a notification for the actual item that we are changing. And so if I change something on a, a title or on a date, I shouldn't get any emails. So we're going to try that first and then we'll go ahead and test it to make sure we're getting it for the exact way that we want to see it. So I'm going to do a manual test and we'll do it like that. And let's see it start running here. Okay, let's go and modify some items. And the first one is we're going to make a change on one of these, but we are not going to change the airline. Okay, so I'm going to change this last one, Las Vegas, uh, and we'll just say, not going to Las Vegas anymore. Something different, right? So we could save that. And we've now made an update, come back to our flow. It should not be running. You can see here, it's still looking. It, it hasn't been, oh, it's run successful. It's noticed there's a change there. Here's our condition. The expression is false in this case. So there it is. So we're not getting the email. We should not have this there at Action Branch. It's not been satisfied. We're not going to get anything here. So that's where we have our original. So now if I come back in here, let's run through. It's notices that something happened, but it's not the condition we want. If I come back in here and run it again or add another uh, item here and update something else, I should be getting that email that I'm looking for. So we can either run another test or just go ahead and, and make that change. I'm just going to run a test for the sake of, of us looking at it right here. Okay, just do another manual. Even though if I just go ahead and make an update, it's going to run anyway because it's on and running. Okay. We are getting an email from SharePoint that a change has been made, but we're not going to um, get the actual email to the manager itself. So we're going to do our test here and we can come in and change. Let's change something else here. Uh, let's go with our West Coast Beach Tour, edit that. And let's change our value here from Southwest. And let's say we want to fly, I don't know, let's pick something random here, British Airways. Not sure why we're going to use British Airways to go to uh, California, but let's go ahead and save that. And now we're going to get two emails, one from SharePoint just saying, hey, an update has been made on that list itself. And the second should go out to the manager. So this is the big difference that we're going to see here. That yes, that SharePoint notifications happen. You can just turn off your notifications on your SharePoint list. But now you'll see the expression has rung true. And we can see the email will be sent. There it is. There's my Outlook email from, um, this would be to the manager. In this case, it's myself. Give me all that information that we have established. So it's exactly what we want to see. Yes, we've, we're getting a SharePoint update. Whoever's running the SharePoint list, the admin of that say, hey, there's been a change to the SharePoint list, just so you're aware. But this is the email that we have sent out to the manager. Now, in this case, I've chosen myself, obviously, for a testing purpose. But now that we have everything that we want. So the trip is our West Coast Beast Tour. We can see the reason for travel. Here it is. There's the new airline selection. And we can also come in here and see that inside of our output, if we go here in our output, we can see which version we're currently on. You notice that I have now changed this five times. Right? I've tested this a couple of times. I've used it for a couple of classes we have. Since version four, this is the newest version that we now have. All the others, these, see these, all these other columns, nothing's changed, only the one value that we're currently looking at. So we're gonna use that has column changed airline right there within our condition. That's the whole point of what we're looking for. 
All of them has, have said false except for the one that's true. So we're gonna say, all right, if that has been true, go down a path. Now we could use a lot of different options in this case to help organize the way that you know we wanna run the flow. If you have a condition here and you wanna set this up and well, if it's this uh, specific column that, that changes, send this type of email. If it's a different column that changes, send a different type of email. In that case, you're gonna have to do some nested if conditions so you have a condition, if yes, do this, if no, run another condition. Same thing, just have a lot of nested conditions within it. If you're looking at a specific column, one column, and you want multiple, just different types of notifications based upon maybe that airline selection, maybe I want a, a one email that says they've chosen Delta, or another email that says they've chosen United, or American, or Emirates, or Japan Airways. Right? We can use a switch condition in that case, based upon that, or a switch control in that case, to be able to change up the type of response we want from there. So you can edit this for, for yourself, changes for the, the, the type of response that you wanna see based on those specific conditions that you would like to have. Well, thanks for joining me again here on YouTube and taking a look at these videos here and how we can integrate Power, Power Automate, SharePoint, Outlook, all these things together to try to help our businesses run more smoothly, to take away some of those manual processes that we always do in the past to help just set up a system to run for us and make everything nice and smooth the way we like to see it. Stay tuned for our next videos as we come out and share more on some tips and tricks here with Power Automate.